Good to know you're still with us. Now, a member of the House of Representatives by the name Chukuma Umeoji has called on the government of President Muhammad Buhari to set inmates of correctional centers across the country free and convert these prisons to quarantine centers for patients who have tested positive for the coronavirus. Should this be given consideration or thrown out outright? Still with me in the studio are we have Ake Joye um, Oluwale, thank you very much. Thank and you. of course, Sam Adeleke, gentlemen. Uh, the conversation uh, continues, yay or nay? Let's start with you. Nope. Why? This is simply because we have lots of hotels across the country that can be converted part-time for this um, usage. We also have lots of houses around Ikoi, Banana Island, Meitama, and many of the eyebrow areas in Nigeria that can be used for these isolation centers. Please, those prisons are not even conducive for the people that are there. How much more bringing people that are sick? What we should be doing is to accelerate justice, the will of justice, so that those who are currently incarcerated can be released and go, and those that need to be sentenced should be sentenced. And, the, and prison reforms, in which you make it more comfortable, make people to actually go through the correctional process. But you're saying that people should be released, come on. It's like, it's, it's like they're still going on this path of giving Boko Haram amnesty. You should not bring that into the case. There are lots of buildings lying fallow across the country that can be converted to this use. Um, I, you were practically laughing when I was doing <laughs> the introduction, so I take it you do not subscribe to that. But let's, let's take it from another angle. What are the likely implications if we were to take this part, for instance? <laughs> they, they, you see, we have more crime because most of these, most of these um, people that you are asking them to release perhaps have not even shown remorse for what they have done, number one. Number two, if you are even looking at taking people to these corrections, how even... How secured are uh, even these places? Because everything we hear from the prisons and uh, um, uh, detention centers is nothing but bad news. So if you're looking at that, just like you have said that, look, what stops, like I know of a popular hotel around here now that has shut down yes. temporarily mm. for the, during this period. And so many hotels, of course, so many hotels where even, look, perhaps does not even have 10, 15 percent occupancy rates Correct. right now. So we could take, we could just say, okay, we could take two hotels, say, okay, let's even use this hotel. And at the end of the day, we are going to fumigate it and get the place prepared again back for our customers. Why don't we go that route? Why should we, why, why must it even, even come up with that, with such a suggestion, even, <laughs> it's even laughable. And it's even, well, but, but we even, need to consider of every angle to no, this. Let's even, take, for instance, Because that line right? of reasoning is, is even faulty. It's because even, he is saying that, that the prisoners should not be sent to their homes. homes. And then so now we can trace the relatives and ensure that the relatives make sure that they do not run away. What, what kind of reason is that? How, how do they think this is about that? This even a country where you even stand shorty for someone with guns <laughs> and the person will still jump bail. Not to talk of now. I mean, we should not even look at it. There, there's, be, there's the position dead on, that... Dead, dead on arrival. That is what that even law should be. That's, but but that these people be. that are in prisons, this is a time, like we said, of what of the possibility that one of these, we talked about it in the previous seg uh, uh, segment, about arresting people. What if this person is um, um, a carrier that doesn't exhibit any symptoms and is arrested and put in the prison, mm. and we have this congested nature of our prisons at this time, wouldn't that creates even another pandemic on our hands when these inmates that are in were already struggling as it is to contain um, the virus. Yes, it's, 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 it's going to happen because it is simply logical. This is human to human transmission. And when you are bringing in someone who is not a criminal, someone who has just unfortunately gotten a virus and bringing him into that unfortunate environment, you know, it will definitely multiply. So we should not even, I, I think we should just throw this discussion into the basket, into, into the dustbin and burn it because it should not even be on the table at all. To be honest, the congestion in prison is, is valid because in other countries we have seen, um, like Iran, in which the prime minister is suggesting now that they should release about 10,000, yeah. you know, exactly. We have petty criminals across the country that are currently incarcerated. Let those guys go home and let them congest the prisons. But having 
um, people who have tested for this virus or in isolation in those prisons, it's a no-no. The idea that you've put out now would not have come up if the man hasn't said, let's decongest the prison. Well, so already, conversations already, like already, this already, promote already, ideas. Already there are, there are steps being taken. The steps perhaps might not be, uh, might, might, might not be doing too well to decongest prisons. And you say, find, find, uh, you say the government in the past, they've made it such a way that perhaps all the judges go to the various, judges go to the various um, state prisons to see and do, and perhaps uh, um, set some people free on minor whatever. Number one, also, they've also made it, except for the fact that, look, the judge in every locality should be going to the police stations to even see those people are in, that are in detention facility, see the reason why they are still in detention, for how long they'll be there, with the aim of setting them free. Yeah. So there are, there are such procedures in place. Either it is being followed, it's a, different, it's a different ball game. And again, you see, the process of our uh, judicial, whatever, judicial reform, if we are going to talk about judicial reform, we should talk about, first of all, the detention. At every offense, now, if you are coming now, if you are driving and perhaps your vehicle break down along the line, police could arrest you. They will say you are obstructing tra traffic. They will, cut, they will take your vehicle. They will even go and clamp you into, into jail. You understand? This is a situation that you can even have an argument with a policeman. You say you are arguing with me, and they will go and they will say you are disobeying so this. You're basically so already we have problem. Of, with the management of our management prisons. Of our but the there, there's of our another prisons. argument that was put forward, though, that I need us to consider, that... Uh, some of these prisons are located in areas that are away from the uh, general public. So uh, in, in, in this situation where you need to isolate people, these locations might be ideal. What do you say to that? I argument? disagree again. There are lots of camps on Lagos about the expressway. These churches that we are saying are disobeying um, the law and the pronouncements. Oh, Let us go to those camps and talk with the general overseers and also the imams and and all that. And let us put people there. There are houses across board that are not in the urban center, in the center of the city. Let us use those places. So I, I think using the prisons as, as, as you say, it's, it's a no-no. It's, it's in the, and no. Even quickly, to, just no. to interject to my brother. Now, if you look at, you see, prior before 19... 75, 78, up to 80, if you go to Kri Kri prisons, you probably find out that there is a Kri Kri prison yard and there is, a, uh, there is an S strip somewhere in Kri Kri. That S strip is no more today. Now, Kri Kri have their next neighbor, they are residential building. Ijebo Ode prison, because I did something on this prison. Ijebo Ode prison is in, is in between houses. That somebody can just escape and he will run into the following yeah. house and we hide under their bed, say, please, uh, 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 save me. Even the Koyi prison is here. Now, the Koyi prison is even worse. It's even worse. The Koyi prison is even so worse. So you're saying that so, argument should be that thrown out. Should be. Okay, let's, let's move away from his comments about the prisons. You both obviously don't share no, no, no. Um, his optimism that that could be a solution. But let's look at him saying that we should close land borders. Um, that's land borders are closed already. Uh, he made. He said, yeah. yes, he, that closing them uh, will help um, to curtail the spread, but they should be opened for pharmaceutical um, entry, um, medicines and all of that, that is needed to uh, find, the, uh, continue research to find a vaccine. They've closed, but should they open <laughs> it for pharmaceutical products? <laughs> well, <laughs> no pharmaceutical product comes into the land borders, as far as I know. Most of these products comes in either they comes in either by cargo by cargo flights or so, the ports or, or they, they come through the ports. But mostly they come through cargo. Uh, cargo so at least one of the things he advocated so, has come to so, pass. The land right, borders so, yeah. have so been the closed. land borders are closed. But if, if you're talking about the land borders, you see. So I think it was on this station sometime that I said, if you're talking about closing of the land borders, we are closing. We are only we've only closed the legal routes. Mm. What of the illegal <laughs> What of the illegal routes? Across the country. We have more illegal routes today that are operating than the legal routes that have been closed. Right. When, so you to, when, you to, to, when you go to when you go to Kotonu, when you go to Kotonu there, if you are going towards the Owode Ideroko border, there is one place they call Golo. There is an hotel there, Hotel the James. One part of the Hotel the James is in Kotonu, mm. and one part of Hotel the James <laughs> is in Nigeria. <laughs> And you will see somebody will go into the hotel mm. and it will pass through 
And before you know, some of these boys, there are some boys that they will just stop you, say that you will give 500 naira and they will allow you in. And the moment you are in, you are in Kotonu. And these are open secrets. It's, and this, it's, and this, it's, 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 what I've said, of course, it, it is verifiable. <laughs> okay, let, let's move away a little and talk about you know more recent developments when it comes to taking charge by our leaders. Uh, there is this viral video of the Abia State governor uh, saying something about, again, it has to do with beliefs and all of that. He was saying that Abia State is the only state that was mentioned in the Bible, so uh, virus is not there. We have the Delta State governor saying, and Aqua Ibom, um, uh, also addressing their people and saying no need to panic, the virus is not there yet. Even though as at now, we know that they're changing that position and showing more of action of what they intend to do. However, what I want us to take a look at is, um, is this just misunderstood efforts? Because sometimes, you know, people say something and you say, oh, you're misunderstood, you're misunderstood. Is it misunderstood effort at reassuring uh, the people or just plain irresponsible utterances by people who should know better? Uh, let, me, let me bring that question to you. You see, if you're in a position of authority, you should be careful with what you say, even with what you joke with. As far as I'm concerned, I don't see it. I don't see it as a joke, and I don't see it as. I, say, I think it's an irresponsible statement from this from this people. Look, we are talking about something that is shaking the whole world. What you should be doing is that if it has not, if it if you have not recorded any outbreak in your state, what you should be doing is that how do we curtail it that we don't have any? You see, Nigeria, we had a lot. A lot a, we have enough time to prepare for this pandemic. Except for the fact that we didn't take action until about, we didn't start taking action until about two weeks ago. It's been on since November last year. It's been on since December. January is so high. February, we didn't start taking action until this March. Some are saying it, um, it's. And again, um, when you look at it, when you look at it again, most of these people that we are talking about came in through our airports. Yeah. They, they are all imported cases. Yeah. You see, okay, you so understand? They were all imported. They came in through our airports. But let, let's look at another angle. Sorry to interrupt you. Let's look at another angle of the argument that is being put up uh, that these comments imply that our governors are, some of our governors, not all of them, with respect to the legal states governor and some others that have been coming out to say what they are doing, uh, that some of these governors are not actually taking this pandemic as seriously as they should, uh, that some of the efforts that they are putting up is just to douse people's uh, suspicion that they are not taking this serious. But because they do not believe that we have a pandemic, they are not doing all that they can to prevent the spread in their state. What should the people do in such a situation? Hmm. The people deserve the leader they get. And the leaders among us are simply a reflection of the followers. But right now, we even have a followership that is also doubting the authenticity of this, of this viral Certainly not siege. helped by positions you know, like these. Exactly. And, and right now, it's now behoves on the Nigeria Governors Forum. Because even if one or two governors are playing irresponsibly, it is not left for people like the governor of Lagos, like the FCC minister, like the minister of health, you know, and those who states now have those numbers to call, and also the, 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 the governor, who, who a lot of people respect, to call on these other governors that are simply making um, um, uh, apost apostolic statements. So let them deviate from that and start putting things in place. And to be honest, I think this is, an, I, this is good for us in a way, because right now, nobody can run anywhere. The first death was announced today, and it was an elite, you know, a former MD of PPPRA. And now it shows that, that even if uh, the former vice president, whose son is isolated, it shows that no one is, 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 um, is insulated from this, yeah. immune from this. This shows that we are the ones that need to build and expand the hospital facilities and the healthcare system, which has been abandoned for so long, because most of the elites, the governors, the, the, the politicians, they all run abroad for healthcare to see that climb. But now, this is our own see that climb. Right now, we must ensure that our system is built, expanded, taken care of, and uh, in, in, in days ahead, we'll, we'll see as things unfold. Let, let's talk about the, um, quickly, uh, the legal state government um, giving civil servants 
asking them not to go to work for Level the next 14 to 12, days. And they are urging uh, private organizations to follow suit. Um, I complain. To, yeah. <laughs> I have complained. Uh, uh, some, we know that some people uh, are, are, have complied. But do you think a majority of Nigerians, considering that some of these people are self um, manage mm -hmm. its small yes. businesses that depend on running consistently, mm. consistently to see, stay salvient. That is one of the reasons why it will not work. First, I was driving in from Ikorodu this evening, and I told you they'd be very, very free. But I was surprised, I was shocked. There was traffic. That there were traffic, mad traffic going. Mad traffic even from, uh, um, uh, what's it called, this junction of uh, Falomo on that bridge, up to these uh, uh, two gates. I even saw it, I said, ah, I thought they said people will reduce. But you see, you see, the reason why is that our economy is driven mostly by uh, um, uh, individuals, in self, the self-employed. Mm -hmm. And you see, find out, so you find out that the Microsoft, the micro, small, and, uh, and uh, medium enterprises, you see, they cannot shut down for as long as you want them to do. They cannot shut down their office for two weeks. They cannot even shut down, some cannot even shut down the office for two days because they rely on daily income. The strategies that have been, that's been now, unveiled by the CBN the that will help the, small are, businesses, you see, do you think? On, they are on papers. First, I am an, look, I am in the, I am in the uh, SME industry, and I can tell you that most of these uh, central banks says they are good on paper, but implementation is almost zero, if not existing. Go okay. and find out. So uh, okay. we don't want to talk about the CBN lapses now because if we go there, it's another ball. Of, it's another uh, uh, sure uh, topic yeah. entirely. But let, but not to do this. They say it will be very difficult for people to really comply. obey this law to comply because people want to go. The market at my twelve was as busy as ever. That, that takes us to that has markets. Okay, shouldn't okay, we okay. be shutting down markets? Considering um, the Oniri market close to where right. we are, the Balogu market. These are the ones that I know of, right? You see how tight, tightly they are positioned. Ventilation is an issue, you know. Isn't it time? Uh, the governor I heard was talking about hygiene, that they should maintain. How can they maintain hygiene in those kind of environments? Some are saying that these markets should be shut down. But then again, if these markets are shut down, how do people get to get the basic items they need? They need. For me, I think this is an opportunity for the government to drive its financial inclusion policy. Because we are seeing that people live on a per day basis, which it is real. But then we are trying to also stimulate the economy and also subsidize this living. Because if people don't go out, they will not eat. Now we are saying, how can the government do that? By simply giving people stipends, maybe giving them a thousand naira or thousand naira per day. How will you do that? By ensuring that the mobile money works. So that the federal government is through the CBN is crediting people in their accounts and saying that if you don't go out today, you're going to get social money in your accounts. And ensuring that people get this and also working with the telcos to ensure that this mobile money and financial inclusion works. So I think that um, um, incentivizing people this period, that the longer you stay at home, the more money you have in your account through this means. And then the second part is ensuring that the ward system, the local government system, because when these politicians want to do their campaigns and primaries, they go through all the wards and they bring the small groups together. So these people can be also used to ensure that cleanliness, hygiene is maintained across the markets in the states. I, I, I know you want to say something, but I'm afraid we're out of time. Thank <laughs> no you problem. so much, gentlemen, for coming on the program. Thank the you. thoughts are really appreciated. Thank you. It's good having me. Right. We'll take our plus report now. And when we return, I will give my take. Stay with us. The Senate has continued the debate on the bill seeking to make election debates compulsory for presidential and governorship candidates in the course of the week. The bill sponsored by Senator Buhari Abdul Fatai from Oyo State saw lawmakers lend their voices to the need for candidates to present themselves to the public and outline their goals and plans for voters. The bill, which is expected to empower the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to organize mandatory debates for election candidates, passed second reading and was referred to the Senate Committee on INEC to report back to the Senate in four weeks for further legislative inputs. Sir, to give legislative backing for Independent National Electoral Commission to organize and conduct debate for all candidates into the offices of the president, 
and Vice President of the Federal, Federal Republic of Nigeria and Governor and Deputy Governor of a state. This bill, if considered and passed by this Allo Chamber, will strengthen our democracy and bring it in conformity with the practice of other renowned democracy in the world. Mr. President, my distinguished colleague, this election debate bill, if passed into law, shall be used to sample the candidate knowledge on a wide range of issues, like detailed analysis of how they intend to drive the economy, foreign, health, and educational policies. What this bill tends to achieve is simply telling Nigeria, know your candidates. And it is high time that whosoever is going to govern us, be he at the state level, at the federal level, even to represent us in the Senate, oh, no. to go through this process. One of the things that we have seen in our environment over the years is that our elected executives have always tended not to have social contract with the people because there is no face-to-face -face interaction. We want to be president, we want to be governors. What is your disposition over the safety of life and property? That's what you see in Section 13. What is your disposition towards federal character? It is only during these debates that we really can establish what these people are saying very frankly before the people. Hence, as a country, we need to grow. And part of the growth of democracy is to introduce things that strengthen it. Secondly, Mr. President, in campaign, everybody, you've had the candidate news only speak for two or three minutes, and it will just be a jamboree kind of thing. But specifically, when they are tested through a series of debates, it shouldn't be one debate, just like we see in developed democracy. It should be like seg segmented to cover key critical areas of the economy, I mean, of the country, economy, health, and other things, so that the candidate will be able to present to the employer who are the electorate their views. I believe that INEC has enough responsibility, and to give INEC the responsibility again to organize uh, this kind of debates, INEC being a government body, uh, could probably cause uh, uh, some difficulty in people, especially in opposition, participate. But on the whole, it's an opportunity, really, uh, for both the voters as well as contestants or candidates to present themselves to the people and for uh, the voters uh, to know who their uh, candidates are. No, coronavirus is not a hoax. Whatever conspiracy theory there might be pales in the reality of the daily number of cases recorded around the globe and the growing number of deaths. We all, as citizens, have a responsibility to ensure we comply with government directives on social distancing and basic hygiene. Religious leaders at this time should show the exemplary leadership they complain is lacking in many of our political leaders. God is everywhere, isn't he? I think so. Let's wrap the show tonight by urging you to stay informed on the latest developments and stay home as much as possible. Thank you very much for watching and see you later.